God bless each and every one of you family. Stephen here. I think it's the 26th of July in the Gregorian year of 2021. And here I am. I hope you are all well. I'm fine. I've got a few uh, health issues, but besides that, I'm fine. And I think it's because I'm on day two of having a rest. Because while we were in York, I suddenly got this terrible back pain. And, uh, I, and it was with me the next day, so I said to Philip, Philip, I, I immediately knew in my spirit that the Lord was allowing it so that I would have a rest because uh, we've been doing this for over four, maybe four and a half months approximately and when you're being faced with so much opposition, persecution and you're witnessing mockers and scoffers and you're being rejected over and over again and and then on top of that you're carrying that speaker around and rucksacks full of tracts and bibles and and all the rest of it and walking everywhere um, you need a rest so i'm sorry i didn't do your video video yesterday I, I was really not well yesterday i'm still i'm still not completely well but i'm a lot better than i was i've just been to the chemist to um pick up some uh anti-inflammatory tablets for my back um, and I had this problem with this itching skin so I've got some cream for that uh, something else they give me as well I don't know what it is but uh, I'd rather God healed me but uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll take it because uh, I need to get onto the streets and preach the gospel of Jesus because he's coming and um, people need to, what I want to do is make it very clear to people just how simple it is to be saved, know you're going to heaven, rapture ready, saved from going down to hell, granted a mansion in heaven, and it's so simple. And I'll just set, I'll, I'll say the gospel right now. Dear loving Heavenly Father, first I just pray over this, over this, uh, um, video Lord that it will indeed be a blessing to everybody watching Lord everybody will go away from watching this video uplifted as you give me the words to speak to them in prayer and edification everything Lord in Jesus name for your glory sake for your name's sake for your words sake for your mercy and truth sake in Jesus name Amen. So, I was going to do a video down the other part, over the other side of the bridge, but there's a guy strimming the grass, so it's too too noisy. Um, so I thought I'd just come down here, and uh, I've got a couple of people, three people, that I would love you to pray for, please, and that is Gordon and Pauline and Alistair. Gordon and Pauline are my mum and dad. Alistair is a friend. First of all, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the most powerful message anybody um, can hear in this world. Everything else cons uh, compared to the gospel of Jesus Christ is irrelevant in comparison. It really is. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is that Jesus died on the cross to shed his blood for the forgiveness of our past, present and future sins. He was buried in a tomb and God raised him to life on the third day. That's the gospel, so simple. And when you believe it in your heart, call upon Jesus you are saved with everlasting life. You are saved, sealed with Holy Spirit of promise. God doesn't go back on his promises. Sanctified 
for the day of redemption. Um, sanct sanctified, it's past tense. It's in the, I think it's in the first book of Corinthians. Uh, ye are washed, ye are sanctified. So it's past tense. Saved, past tense. Justified, past tense. Even glorified, past tense, if you look. Um, so that's the gospel. And when you believe that in your heart and call upon Jesus or confess him as Lord, you are saved forever and you will not lose your salvation. You cannot lose your salvation. No matter how many times you fall, no matter how many times you sin and make a mess of things, he's got you forever and he will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's so important to know when you get established that you are safe forever, it gives you a greater peace. It really does. Because there's so many wolves in sheep's clothing out there, on, especially on YouTube, saying that you can lose your salvation. Basically what they are saying is Jesus' blood was not enough he shed blood on the cross because it is written there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood they are saying well that wasn't enough and we have to do our part it's almost prideful um, unless unless you are actually you are born again and you're just um, being taught this by these false teachers it's, a, it's the biggest heres, heretical teaching going about today. And the second biggest te heretical false teaching is that um, we have to go through the tribulation. Both are lies. And once you get established in the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, you will find more peace. You, you just know that Barack Hussein Obama, the Antichrist, cannot be revealed until that which withholds him is taken out of the way. That which restrains the Antichrist has to be removed first for him to be revealed. And not just him, but the whole whoo, Antichrist beast system cannot be established until we are taken out of the way. Uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ, any moment, is going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will be resurrected. All those that ever believed on Jesus will be resurrected. And then we which are alive, all believers which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them, with the resurrected in Christ, in the air, to meet the Lord Jesus in the air, in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord Jesus. And we're told, commanded to comfort one another with these words. Because I know many of you are going through troubles. I go through them myself. Some of you are going through some severe troubles and trials. But uh, I'm even getting emails from China. Uh, I won't mention her name for her protection. But she, she told me that in some cities and towns in China, they, are, they cannot... They cannot buy or sell unless they have had the viper bite. So it's just a matter of time. It's not the mark. It's not. It's the precursor, but it is not the mark. And how do I know this? Well, first of all, we haven't got a beast. We, we have. He's already here. I know who he is. But he cannot be revealed until we're taken out of the way. So we haven't got a beast, and I know, 
I know Christians, born again Christians, filled with the love of God, filled with Holy Spirit, on fire for God. And they, some of them, some of them have taken two, two shots. Um, some have only taken one. So those that receive the mark of the beast, once they receive that, they, their fate is sealed and they are cast into the lake of fire, the second death. So uh, it's not the mark. Unfortunately, many people have been conned, tricked, duped into taking um, the Jabaruru, you know? But it's not the mark. But what I do believe, I think the Lord gave me this wisdom, um, that those that take the mark will not be able to take it unless they have uh, the Lucifer, you know, race inside them. Um, unless they have that inside them. That's what the Lord showed me, and, I, and it's in the right hand, or in the forehead. So, I think it'll be something like a quantum dot tattoo, um, which literally will, you won't be able to take it out. I don't believe it's an RFID chip, because that you'd just be able to cut out with a scalpel. Um, so it can't be that. Sorry for the wind if it's a bit windy, but... Oh yeah, so... If you haven't believed on Jesus, please. It's not about religion. It's not about religion. I, I'm absolutely appalled with righteous indignation towards not all churches, but the majority of them. I'm absolutely appalled that they haven't told people how simple it is to be saved and how it doesn't matter what you have done, that all can be saved, no matter who we are, no matter what we have done. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. So that's one reason why I'm upset with the church. They've made it sound like it's all about being religious. You know, when, when I tell people I'm a Christian, they say, they say stuff like, well, well, I'm not religious. They always say that. Um, and I have, to, I have to defend it. I say, it's not about religion. Um, it's about believing on the Son of God. And God created the whole world through his Son, Jesus. And it's about the gospel, that Jesus took the penalty in full on the cross for all our sins. And it is past, present and future. He was buried and rose again on the third day, which is the gospel, the blessed gospel. And when you believe that in your heart, not just up here and think, hmm, that sounds true. No, you believe, you receive, you receive it in your inner man. And you call upon Jesus. You know in your inner person that it's the truth. And you either confess Jesus as Lord or you call upon him. I said, come into my life, Lord Jesus. And he did. And when he did, I was 22. Must have been about 22. I was on the streets of London for a year and then... This nice man, Graham, took me off the streets into his house. He kept trying to get me to go to these Christian meetings, but um, I kept saying, nah, it's not for me, like this, you know? <laughs> and then one day, he must have been praying hard for me, because one day, he managed to persuade me to come to a meeting that they were having in a school, rented out for the evening. And uh, there was about 100 people there, actually. And um, I heard the gospel message being preached, and I believed it. I believed unto righteousness. I believed. And when they had finished, a woman came on playing 
guitar songs. Another preacher came up. Team of evangelists. Well, when they finished, they said, right, that's it now. Um, the, the exit is at the back. If, if anybody would like to be prayed for, please stay behind. So the vast majority of people left. And there was me, less than five people who st stayed behind for prayer. And these three or four evangelists came up to me and they said, what would you like us to pray for? And I, I said, I haven't got a clue. I just know that, I, I told them, I said, I'm, I'm a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. And they said to me, have you ever asked the Lord Jesus into your life? And I said, no. And I was very nervous because I was only 22 and I was surrounded by a lot of older men. And they said, would you like to? I said, yes, quite nervously. Yes, please. So I asked the Lord Jesus into my life. They said, just say it. So I said, please come into my life, Lord Jesus. And as I said that, these three or four pastors or evangelists, whatever they were, they were, they were patting me on the, like this, going, saying in the name of Jesus and speaking in tongues, like this and um, I started laughing at first Holy Spirit laughter came upon me joy of the Lord came upon me and then woo, I don't know I don't know what happened it was like a whoosh like this and I was baptised in Holy Spirit and I felt like I was Obviously, I'm not Jesus, but I felt like I was Jesus crucified on the cross, looking at these other people. And the glory of the Lord was so powerful upon me that the people who had just been praying for me had to move away from me. They were like, couldn't look upon me because the glory of the Lord was upon me. And I sobbed. I sobbed and sobbed, oh my gosh, and I thought I was a tough guy, I didn't cry in front of men, I didn't care though, I didn't care, and I, I was looking at them through the eyes of Jesus, and I was thinking, why, why can't they look at me, as tears were streaming down my face, I've never felt so loved in all my life, not in this world. That was the greatest love that I have ever experienced. And I'm not kidding you, I, I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. And, and they said to me, um, my legs started to go like this. <laughs> and they said, sit down please. Because they could see that if I didn't, I was going to fall down. So I sat down and I sobbed even more. And I cried because nobody had ever shown me that kind of love before. And wow, I just, I just felt all this, every burden and anxiety and everything just lifted off me. Uh, I literally felt like I was a, a glowing light. That's what I felt like. And I remember saying to them, because I was a drug addict and a heroin Actually, no, I wasn't into heroin then. I was, I was into amphetamines and ecstasy and uh, alcohol. Weed was my favourite. And it, I was doing all that anyway. And I remember saying to them, I said, wow, that is better than any drug I've ever taken. What was that? Like this. And they said, oh, that's, that's, that's Holy Spirit. Like this. Nobody told me that I'd been born again. Nobody explained to me or nurtured me up. And uh, nobody pastored me, shepherded me. Um, so I stayed with that church some weeks, going out onto the streets of London, um, taking uh, sandwiches that uh, 
big shop here uh, didn't sell for that day fresh sandwiches but they couldn't keep them because they'd be past the sell by date. We, we should take them in big black sacks. Me, Graham, the man who brought me to Christ, who put me up, uh, we went taking them up to the homeless people and, and I remember just how on fire, full of the joy of the Lord I was. And, um, but because nobody um, brought me up in the faith, that taught me anything, I think they gave me a Bible, but I can't remember reading it. But because nobody told me what had happened or anything, matter of weeks, and I thought, sack this off. I'm going back onto the streets. You know, I just spent a year on the streets of London. I'd nearly been killed uh, once for sure. I came so close to being killed by a man who attacked me with a baseball bat um, down a dark street in King's Cross in London. He attacked me with this baseball bat. No, sorry, it wasn't a baseball bat. It was a, a rounder's bat. I don't know if you have rounders in the USA, but it, it's, it's like a baseball bat, it's, but it's just a bit shorter. But he attacked me with this. And he was so savage, this man, he just kept going whoosh, 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 like this really fast and um, he didn't hit me once with it because I had a little ghetto blaster um, tape recorder thing and every time he went for me with this bat I put that up and that got uh, bashed up but I didn't from the bat but he, he was a big guy he must be like three times the size of me great big black bodybuilding guy and he just went Boom, like that in my face. Bush, uh, split lip, bloodied nose, uh, bits of teeth missing just from one punch. But the funny thing, well, yeah, it was. It was the thing that happened was that um, this was down a dark street at one o'clock in the morning in King's Cross. There was nobody about. He was going for the kill. That's what he wanted to do, he wanted to kill me. And then all of a sudden, and he was getting the better of me as well. And all of a sudden, he just looked with sheer terror in his eyes and he threw the bat on the floor and he ran like an athlete so fast that I, I ran after him shouting, I'm gonna kill you like this. But he ran that fast I couldn't catch him. And it wasn't until 2004, 2005, that the Lord told me he had seen an angel behind me. And that is why the sheer look of terror came in his eyes. And I've been saved now, well, since then, 1992. I've been saved, but I went back into the world, I went back onto the streets, sex, drugs and rock and roll. And I ran away from God for, oh, just checking the phone, not getting a, I, I'm gonna have to do it this way because I'm waiting for a phone call. Anyway, I ran away from God and um, like Jonah really, running away from God and calling. And, uh, and I, I spent 10, 11 years running away from God, um, continuing to do drugs. I got into heroin. I got to the lowest of the low, crack cocaine and chronic alcoholism, homeless, living in caves, living in bushes, wherever I could lay my head with my dog, which I, I found a black Labrador while I was homeless in the streets of London and I took him to Spain with me. He traveled, I walked across Spain with my black Labrador dog and the Lord delivered me time without number, time without number um, from people who literally went out of their way to kill me. Uh, the Lord delivered me, he delivered me from uh, a German Nazi who tried to kill me with a large commando knife delivered me, protected me. 
He delivered me from a demon-possessed man who had an iron bar and a kitchen knife. First of all, he... What was it first? First of all, it was the... I think it was the knife. He literally went to stab my face with this kitchen knife. And I just man managed to knock it out of his hand before... But it's it slit. I don't know if you can see all these. I got scars all over my hand, where he, he cut me open with that kitchen knife. Then he dropped the knife, and it was dark. I didn't see, and he had an iron bar, and then, again he went for my head with a heavy iron bar, and he was such a small guy. I don't know how he managed to lift that iron bar, because of the demon inside him, and he went for me my head with this iron bar. I just put my arm, arm up naturally to protect, protect myself and my arm was broken in four places and I had a pot from here to my shoulder on. Broken arm in four places and the strange thing is I never laid a hand on him and I called the police, listen to this, this is very eerie and strange. Um, I called the police and they came and he came out of this building where it happened, a squat. I don't know if I don't know what you know what squats are in America. It's where where homeless people will just um, live in like this place. Abandoned buildings and stuff. Anyway, he came out he came out of this squat, literally spitting all of his teeth out into his hands in a bloody mess and he said that I'd done it and I know for a fact that I never laid laid a hand on him so again I believe I was uh, protected by the angel of the Lord that the angel of the Lord has healed me of hepatitis C before they even had a known cure back in 2003 um, I, my skin my skin started to go yellow my face started to go yellow my hands were yellow it's a liver infection is hepatitis C and I either got it from sharing a needle the only three times I ever injected um, somebody set it up for me and it was either that or it was from unprotected sexual relations uh, so I caught this hepatitis C I went down to a church called Ebenezer Baptist Church. And I don't know if you're listening to this, Bill. I doubt it, but if you are, thank you for that prayer. Because uh, Brother Bill laid his hands on me and another nice gentleman, I can't remember him. But um, I went back to the liver specialist. She wanted to take another sample of my blood to see how the, the, the hep C had um, progressed. And it had already previously progressed to the point where they were worried for my life and I had, was going to go into hospital for treatment. Anyway, she took this sample of blood. Two weeks later, I got a call saying, didn't tell me anything, just said, Stephen, I'd, I'd like you to come, on, come in, please, and discuss something. So I went, in, I went into the liver specialist and she says, I've got some good news for you. I think it's good news anyway. She said, I don't know how, but I've, from the last blood test, the blood test was taken just after I got prayed for, um, she said, there's no trace of hepatitis C in your blood. So she said, I, 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 I'm, I want to do another one because just to make sure in case I've done something wrong. She was um, unbelieving that I didn't have it. Um, so she took another blood sample and there we go again. No trace of hep C in my blood. So another answered prayer that the Lord delivered me from. Um, the Lord delivered me, without going into too much detail, gory details. Um, straight after 9-11, I was homeless and I walked into a Spanish village and it was full of obviously Spaniards, but it was filled with uh, 
Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians, uh, mostly Arabs, Muslims. And I entered into this town called Los Alcáceres. And there was a, I was trying to buy some uh, hashish resin. So I was asking all these people and I got some, um, the equivalent of five pounds worth. I got some and I sat on just outside a, a bar. I wasn't usually allowed in places because I had my hair in dreadlocks. I hadn't washed for months, apart from my hands and face. And, um, in the sea, that's where I used to wash, because I was homeless. And um, anyway, to cut a long story short, one of these Muslim guys started to mouth off to me, and uh, I can't remember what I said to him. He spoke broken English and broken Spanish, and all of a sudden he just turns around, and he wallops me right in the face and then I I tried to defend myself I I was sat down drinking a little bottle of San Miguel beer on a step just outside a bar and he just started laying into me and before I know it um, this whole gang of Muslims perhaps between 30 or 40 Muslims um, all gathered around to I think they're going to lynch me to death. Um, it was straight after 9-11 and all the Arabs were rejoicing. They were absolutely ecstatic that uh, this had been done to America, apparently by Muslims, but we know now that it was uh, an inside job. But anyway, um, so uh, what was I going to say to... Uh, yeah, so they were just incensed against me and uh, they were going to lynch me to death. And then all of a sudden, um, this door opens behind me where on the step where I'm sat and this great big guy just grabs hold of me. I mean, I'm not that big. He just picked me up inside, put, shut the door, bolted the door and said, you're safe now, stay here until they go away. So again, the Lord saved me. They were going to lynch me to death. I don't know why I'm talking about all this all of a sudden. Uh, I don't know, I just did pray that the Lord would guide me. Um, so I can tell you that once you are saved, you're saved, sealed, sanctified, and Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never, never forsake you. And I'll tell you something, guys, I've only just told you two, three, four things that God has delivered me from. And I could tell you a whole load more as well. Um, overdose. Two, twice I was put on a life support machine from overdose of pills and alcohol. Um, what else? Let me think. Lord, remind me what else you've delivered me from. Uh, oh, I could just go on and on and on. Um, how I shouldn't be here. Uh, 2003, I came back from S Spain, got back to Scarborough, and I managed to get off the heroin and crack, but I couldn't quite stop the alcohol. And I, I had a bottle of tequila in my hands, which I'd stolen, and not advising that, by the way, uh, but I'd stolen this bottle of tequila. And I was with a, fr well, a so-called friend, and we were drinking it. And we bu bumped into these other alcoholics who wanted us to join them in the, in the back of a, a museum here in Scarborough with some quiet gardens where very, very rarely anybody goes. Anyway, um, they stole, they, they asked for a drink of the tequila. I said, OK, then just don't drink it all. And they just snatched it off me and they said, now F off, it's ours. And I said, I said no, it's not, that's mine. And uh, they just pushed me away. They, they glugged down the, the tequila between them. And then one of them got the empty bottle, bashed me on the back of the head with it. 
Um, then I was pushed, pushed, I was beaten by four or five guys, no, four, three or four, beaten, and then they, they grabbed hold of me and threw me off a, off a wall, perhaps 15, 18 feet long, uh, t tall, sorry. They threw me off this wall and I landed on my head and cracked open the, my skull and my, my so-called friend who was with me originally, he ran off for his own life and left me there um, unconscious, um, lying in a pool of blood, seeping from my head. And God sent an old lady down there to find me. And she took me to the hospital I, I woke up in the hospital with a um, very sore throat and they told me that that's because they'd had an oxygen pipe shoved down my throat and I said, oh, I said, what's happened to me? And they told me you've been, you've been set upon by a number of guys and I said, oh, okay, I need the toilet and I went to move to go to the toilet and I screamed and she says, don't move, you've got broken ribs as well. So, uh, pretty nasty, really. But the Lord healed me pretty quick, really. Uh, as far, I can't, I don't, it wasn't stitches. I think they glued my head or cemented it back or something like that. I can't, I can't remember because I had a cracked skull. Anyway, I've gone on a lot on this video, guys. But I'm just trying to let you know just how secure you are once you're born again. I uh, got born again. It wasn't until 10 or 11 years later that I started seeking the Lord. And 2005, I re-devoted my life back to the Lord. And, and it still wasn't the end of it because I, I backslided. I backslided, ended up back on heroin, back on crack cocaine. Not the alcohol though. Um, and I, I've been in and out of all these backslidings for, for many years. And um, now I was a heroin addict for 20 years. Now I'm on some, uh, some medication for that. I've been on it for five years. And uh, I'm... I, I'm, I'm lowering myself down off this medication slowly because it's an opiate it's also used to treat pain relief as well but um, I've had so many things the Lord has delivered me uh, one Arab man attacked me uh, one Arab attacked me with a knife he went to stab me with a knife I, I managed to grab his hand and bash his hand against the wall until he dropped the knife um, what was the other one I was going to say? Uh, another Arab. Um, they just hate. I, when I turned up in this town, when I was nearly lynched by all those Muslims, um, I was the only person in the whole town with blonde hair, and they just connected that to the to to, to the West, and they hate the West. A lot of these Muslims, these fanatical Muslims. Uh, anyway, another Muslim uh, attacked me, and he managed to tripped me up on the floor and then dived on top of me like a wild cat and he tried to gouge out my eyes and I had to shut my eyes so tight so that he couldn't actually gouge my eyes out and here I am today 50 years old in relatively good health you know um, considering I could really expound on all this, I could tell you so much more. But the point I'm trying to get to is once you are saved, that's it. You cannot even take yourself out of God's hand. You are, you've been bought, you're bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Your life is signed for in the blood of Jesus. And your name is written in the book of life. And you'll never lose your salvation. 
So anyway, guys, I'm going to get off because I didn't realise I was rambling on a bit. I just thought some people have been asking me for parts of my testimony. I just wanted to give you that. Also, to encourage you, to show you that you don't lose your salvation. You'll never lose your salvation. Once you're saved by being born again, which happens the moment you truly believe that Jesus hung on that cross, shedding his blood for the forgiveness of all your sin, past, present, future, he was buried and rose again from the dead on the third day. When you've believed that in your heart and you've called upon Jesus, you are eternally secure. So that was the main message behind what I just told you, really. Just to show you how the Lord will never give up on you. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now, He will not give up on you. It doesn't matter. If you've sinned, if you've just sinned, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, now the Lord's really, really, really done with me now. No, He hasn't. If you're saved, no, He hasn't. I'm not saying it's okay to sin just in case anybody twists what I say. No matter how many times you fall, and I'm gonna say it, no matter how many times you sin, you cannot take yourself out of his hand. I really want you to know this, every one of you, um, because you will feel so much better, so much more at peace. I did something yesterday, I'm not going to go into details, but I transgressed. I did something of the old me yesterday, which I haven't done since like seven years ago. Well, I did it yesterday. Anyway, and uh, I felt so grieved because I got the Holy Spirit in me and I felt, oh my gosh, Lord, why did I do that to hurt you? And um, Oh, the overwhelming love. I told a precious sister, she knows who she is. The only person I really think I can talk to on, on things like this, who won't get legalistic with me and stuff. Anyway, I told this sister, she prayed for me and I felt almost that first, the same first love that I felt when Jesus baptized me in his Holy Spirit. It was so beautiful. And it's just made me not want to ever do it again. Um, and you know, I, I will sin. I will sin. I will. I won't intentionally do it, but, but we will. Just, just one wrong word can be sinful. Or one wrong thought. If any man says he has no sin, he deceives himself, and the truth is not in him. We will not be perfect until the day we see Jesus as he is, and we put on, we put off first these corruptible mortal bodies that are decaying outwardly but are being renewed inwardly each day, and we will put on glorified bodies like Jesus' own. I believe we'll be able to fly. I believe we'll be able to walk like Jesus walked through doors. I believe we'll be able to do all that and even more. Um, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. So fantastic that there just isn't words for it. And the place that we're going to Again, there's just no words apart from some words in in the Revelation. There's, you know, the, the, the city of God paved with pure transpa transparent glass. Um, just everlasting joy. We are going to be so happy. Sadness, dying, uh, that will all flee away. And we're gonna, oh my gosh, oh boy, Father God, I pray you give them a good reminder today. I pray you bless everybody watching and give them a good reminder, everyone who's born again, just how goodly the inheritance is that they have coming for them uh, at the rapture. 
of the church. I just pray for anybody who's suffering. Lord, because we all go through suffering, we're being refined in a furnace of suffering. So anybody who's going through illness, sickness, disease, um, anybody who's uh, feeling depressed, anybody who's feeling like they just can't go on, um, Lord, I lift them up to you. Anybody who is struggling to make ends meet, to buy food, I pray you provide for them. I pray you encourage everyone watching, Father God, in Jesus' name. Bless them richly and abundantly, adding no sorrow with it, Lord. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. So he will bless you indeed, and he'll keep you, keep you in his shadow, keep you under his wing in his hand he will hold your hand and he will keep you in his perfect love today whatever time it is wherever you are morning afternoon evening and, it, and he'll be gracious unto you lord be gracious unto them lord lift up your countenance the the appearance of the lord god be upon them and the glory and the light and the beauty of the Lord be upon you all in the name of Jesus. He will make a noticeable difference to you all. Watching this, I know he will. Every last one of you, not one of you, will go away not being blessed by the Lord which made heaven, the earth, the sea and all that therein is. He will make such a noticeable difference for you all. And he'll give you his peace. And he'll confirm to you that we are in the season for the Lord's return, the rapture. At any moment, Father God, give them all fresh confirmations. Let any depression, anxiety, worry be turned into joy. Lord, make them glad and happy in the name of Jesus. Above all, your love. Melt their hearts with your beautiful love. Lord Jesus, have mercy and compassion on them. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. So be blessed, guys. Stay watching. Um, watching for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, which is about to take place any moment. And bear this in mind, guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless them. And bear this in mind, guys. The Lord has shown me that the tribulation is going to be so severe. This is why the Lord has tarried. I know he's got an appointed day, but we, we're thinking, Lord, we, some of us, we're feeling like we can't go on anymore. Pray, Lord, if anybody's feeling like that, you'll turn it around and strengthen them right now in Jesus' name. But the tribulation is going to be such a severe time that I believe God wants more people to be saved and get on board the ark of salvation before the tribulation. Because that's it's going to be so severe. But if you're left behind, you will still be able to be saved. If you're watching this, don't believe the lie when you, when you witness all these people vanish, that we were abducted by aliens, because they're not aliens, they're demons, disembodied spirits of Nephilim, which I believe have managed to be brought over through the veil, and they're here now, fallen angels. Um, they will proclaim that they have taken us to another world for correction because we were wrong 
in believing that Jesus is the Christ. We were wrong in believing that, and actually, uh, the Antichrist, he's the true Christ. That's what they're going to say. I, I very much, 99.9%, uh, .9 believe that is the strong delusion. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they might all be damned, which believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So I'm going to get off now because I've got a friend calling me any moment. Um, be bold, be strong. Don't worry about, uh, get anxious about sharing the gospel with anyone. Pray about it. Ask God to surround you with his angels and just uh, buy some gospel tracks. Pin them, pin them to bush shelters, pin them to walls. Um, and if you're able, hand them out in the street. Just hand them out and say, God bless you, Jesus loves you. And once you take that step of faith, the Holy Spirit takes over and will supply all that you need, the boldness, the protection. Pray that he will send out his angels before you and behind you. Uh, be bold and be strong, everybody, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because uh, we are about to leave. And there are some people who say there, is, there ain't going to be many saved during the tribulation. That's not true. Revelation uh, 7 verse 9 and 14 shows us that a great multitude... Which, which no man can number, come out of great tribulation, washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb, and they don't love their lives unto the death. So that will be the greatest harvest ever of Christians during the great tribulation. Um, yep, yeah, so... Just consider that when you're thinking about all these people who you love and, you know, all, well, we, we love people because we've got the love of God in us, don't we? So just bear that in mind, that all is not lost when we leave because uh, there will be 144,000 uh, Jews uh, in, landing on Mount Zion with the Lamb Jesus, they will go out into all the world, evangelizing to the to the remnant of the Jews and possibly to the Gentiles. I would say as well. There's a uh, the two witnesses. There's the angel flying through the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel, and then there's all these uh, Pharisees and uh, some church pastors even who haven't truly believed but when they see it come to pass these will be tribulation saints and God has shown me that they will be the most boldest the most courageous of all saints that have ever been well the Bible says they will not l love their lives unto the death and God has shown me that through them he is going to work some mighty wonders he's really going to show his power through them and they're going to work miracles and wonders um, anyway I've got to go now because I'm expecting a friend to ring any moment now meet up with him and think, think perhaps his wife as well then I've got to ring Alistair and I, I beg you to please pray for my mum and dad Pauline and Gordon I love them so much and I've been preaching to Gordon and Pauline, my mum and dad, for, for years. And uh, I, I do videos for them preaching the gospel, how easy it is. And I, I, haven't real, I haven't received any word to the effect that they're any closer to God. And I love them to bits. And I, I'm grieved in my heart. So please pray for both Pauline and Gordon. And I pray for everybody watching, Father, who has family and friends that they love. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would powerfully 
draw them to the cross, Father. Magnify your name in their hearts. Jesus, your love, your truth, your grace, and your peace upon them. And Lord Jesus, reveal the Father in heaven to all our family, all our friends who are unsaved, in the, in the almighty name of King Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I'm going to get off, guys. I'm, I'm sorry if I've gone off a, a bit, but there's a few people emailed me and messaged me to say a little bit about my testimony. So I've just added a bit more to show you you cannot lose your salvation ever. You can't even take yourself out of his hand. That's how sure it is. All right? God bless you guys. And I know I will see you very shortly. If we're still here tomorrow, even if I've got this back pain, I'm still going onto the streets because the time is at hand. Jesus is coming and I've got some new, uh, some new words of wisdom and understanding to uh, make the gospel. The gospel is simple, but I've got some, God's given me some more wisdom and understanding to, to, to make it sound even easier. You know, because a lot of people are put off because they think, ooh, it's, going, it's about going to church. Many people have had bad experiences in churches. All the churches in this town are owned and controlled by Freemasons. And if I get a chance, I'll go through them all and show you all the Masonic symbology. And in not one of them have I ever heard um, anybody preach on Revelation because it is the only book in the Bible that promises a blessing to those that hear it, um, keep those things which are written therein. Um, so that's why these Masonic churches don't preach on Revelation, because it's a promised blessing to those who hear it. So I'll show you one day, I'll show you the Masonic tiles, the pillars, the serpents, um, the sun worship, I'll show you it all one day, if I get a chance. Um, until, until the next time, guys, um, I hope sometimes when I'm feeling all right, I hope that the Lord will tarry so that I can preach the gospel to more people. But some days I feel that under so much attack or ill or whatever, I'm just like, oh Lord, please come. So he will come anyway in his perfect timing. Um, I was gonna say something, I seem to have got a bit lost, but anyway, never mind. I'm gonna get off, guys. I've made this long enough. Just remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you can do all things through Jesus. Jesus Christ, which strengthens you. And the things that are impossible with God are possible sorry the things that are impossible with men are possible with god he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think to him be glory in the church forever and what was the other thing oh yeah don't forget stay in his word even if you just read a paragraph a day stay in his word because man cannot live by bread alone, but he must feed on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I'm gonna get off now, guys. Um, it's coming up to an hour. I think it's one of the longest videos I've ever made. I hope it uploads. God bless you guys, I love you.